Notion is an amazing tool to help your team work better together. But it can also be really overwhelming. Particularly when you're designing a Notion workspace for others, you need to be extra careful. Whether you're a template creator, a consultant, or the Notion champion at your company, you need to help people understand your system. Or else, they won't use it and all your effort was for nothing. But don't worry. In this video, I'm going to share with you three things to make your life and your Notion setup a whole lot easier. First up, an incredibly powerful method to build simpler workspaces in Notion. Second, why you should start using a specific type of Notion formulas in your builds. And third, a small but mighty new Notion feature that you don't want to miss. Let's jump right in. This one is super exciting to me. I thought about this approach in the past, but it just was quite complicated to implement. But now, thanks to Notion's new database automations feature, it's finally simple and easy. And it's a real game changer. Automatic page settings are finally here. Let's take, for example, this wiki from my Notion knowledge system. If you have any system for a company or for your team, you probably have a lot of database properties that you want people to fill out. And telling them which one to fill out which way isn't always the easiest. Now, you could of course just ask them right, to go through all the properties, but that's often not the most intuitive, right? If you have, like here, we have not just a few shown, but they're actually, you know, a lot more that power different parts of the features. And if you have all these things to scroll past, you know, and some of them are backend properties, some of them are for them to fill, it can get confusing quite quickly. Page settings solve that issue. So now they can just open this toggle and then they have different categories, different actions that they can do. So we could say, well, general information. And then we can like display them exactly because it's a Notion page, right? All the information that they need, everything they need to do, we could even include con instructional videos. And then we can include this entry, the one that we're currently looking at, as a filtered database and show exactly the properties that we asked them to fill out, right? So we show responsible, department, type, and status. And if we look, for example, uh, on the Ask Team Members for Feedback, we see different properties. We see the one input required, input by, and input provided to basically power this async uh, document collaboration feature. And every time we take our main database, we embed it here and we filter it for only this entry. Now, the main problem with this method and why I mentioned before that it used to be very complicated to set this up is that Notion doesn't provide an easy way to filter for that entry. Right? We look at an entry in the wiki database and we have our wiki uh, database embedded here, but there's no filter where we can just tell Notion, well, just show me the one entry that I'm currently looking at. Instead, we need a workaround. So here's our sample setup that we can use to demonstrate how this workaround works. We have our sample database and we have two properties. Of course, you can do this with as many properties as you need. The first thing that you need to do is you need to create one helper property. So we click the plus button and we look for a relation property. And this will be a relation not to a different database, but to the same database. So I pick my sample database and I don't want to show it twice. I just need to see it once and we will call this uh, helper page settings. And then we add this relation. That's the first step. And then the second step has to do with Notion's database automations. They are what finally make it possible. Because what we need to do is we need to relate every entry here to itself. And then we can use Notion's self-referential filters on a database template to only show us that entry. Don't worry if that sounds complicated, I will walk you step by step through everything. And if you don't have database automations on your account, then I've created a template for you that you can download for free with a link in the description. And there you have the automation already activated and you can just build it out to whatever use case you need it to. So let's get to it and build that automation. We click on that flash icon and then we create a new automation and we will label this uh, also page settings helper. Next, we want to add our trigger. So we click on here and we say whenever a page is added to this database. And then what we want to do is once a page is added, we want to edit a property. So we go down here and we say helper page settings. Please make it a relation to the page that we just added. And we click on done and we click on create. And that's it. Now I can actually like remove these entries and I can show you how it works. We create like a new entry, we wait for a second and then it will pop up here as an automated relation. You see, new entry related to new entry. Now what we can do is then we can go in here and we can say, well, create a new database template and we can call this sample page settings or whatever you want to call your template. And down here we can create our H1 um, toggle heading, call this page settings and in here, create now a linked database view. So I will just do one, but you can again like break it down with more toggles if you need so. So 
we type create for our linked view of a database and we will pull that database that we're working on. And here we can just uh, take our empty view, right? And we can do some cleanup, but right? we can hide the database title, these sort of things. And now we wanna set up a filter. And this filter, let's get an advanced one, will say that wherever the helper page settings contains and then sample page settings. So this is the name of our template here, right? And this is what is called a self-referential filter. This will update to whatever name you give the page that you create. So basically, right, whenever you create a new page, it will update this filter to only show entries related to that new page. And that means we will only see one entry at all times here, the one that we are currently looking at. So last but not least, we can just like hide that one property because that's the one we don't need to see. And we can close this down a bit and we can, um, oops, close this here and go out of our uh, template. And we can now open our new entry and we can apply this template. And then we can see that in here, we can then edit our one entry. And to show you that it's actually just at one entry, let's create uh, two more entries. But first, let's set this as our default. Set as default for all views and then create like a, a second entry. And if I now click on my second entry, you see now it's related, it takes a second. I open the page setting up. I see again, only the second entry and none of the others. And that's how you can create these page settings in Notion, which are so, so powerful to help people understand and better, you know, fill out all the properties that you have in your great setup. Next up, formulas. Yes, formulas can often make a workspace more complicated, but I promise you, this one will make your setup a lot easier to understand. First, let's look at the problem. Let's assume again, you have a database and you have a lot of important information in it. And while it is in a table format, it's super easy to read all the information, right? I see, okay, my one number is that number, that's my another number, and this is my date. The problem occurs if you want to display this in a slightly nicer way. In particular, if you want to display it as cards in a gallery or a board view. Because as you can see, if I switch over to a gallery view for that same information, I still have my second entry. And for the checkbox, interestingly, Notion tells me, well, what is that checkbox for? Right here, I see, well, should I check it or not? That's the same that I have also here as a title. But for my other values, I don't have any context. These are, as far as I'm concerned, random numbers and a random date. And of course, I can hover over them to identify what it is for, but it's not the most user intuitive, right? If someone looks at this and just wants to quickly uh, know, okay, what is this about? They don't know what 100 and 107 is about. So in these situations, you can use two super simple formulas to make everyone's life a bit easier. And let's go back to the table view to show that. The first one, that's like the easiest formula you will ever write. And this is what I call a display formula or a divider formula. So we look for formula and we just call, let's just call this display and then um, one number to make sure, right, that we link it for, just for us to understand that this will be the display for the one number. And then in our formula, what we're going to do is we simply type within quotation marks, whatever context we need to add to that number, right? So if one number is all we actually need to know about this, right? So, okay, let's call this number one as information. That's all we need to type into the formula. Then we click on done. And then we see, well, this will be filled out everywhere. And of course, here in the table view, we don't need this. So here in the table view, we can hide this property. But in the gallery view, we can now go to properties. We can turn on our uh, display property and we can drag it above our one number, right? And then we can probably like to make it, uh, oops, a bit easier, let's actually like edit it to include also our uh, colon, right? And now we see, okay, number one, that's 100. And of course we would create a second property like this, right, for the other one. And then we have both of these as dividers above each number uh, to get give us the context for that corresponding information. And we can do that for numbers, but you can do the same way for dates, right? To tell us if we have several dates, which one is a due date and which one is a different kind of date. Now we can take this formula one step further because with this setup, we run into an issue sometimes that we have a lot of lines, right? So we have this and then we have a separate line information. We can combine these informations though by just expanding our formula slightly. So we can create a new formula and call this display two <laughs> number one and then we go in here and this time we will still get our information first, right? So let's call this number one, uh, this and our um, quotation mark. And then we type a plus sign and then we just grab the other value that we want to show here, right? So we could now grab our one number. And then if there's even more information around this, right? So maybe this is like, you know, like uh, units ordered, then we could like include this also afterwards just to make it a bit more, uh, you know, human readable. And we can call this units ordered. Now, one thing that's very important is that with a plus sign, it will just, you know, combine them all together 
uh, without any space. So we need to add a space uh, in between our first uh, information and the um, quotation mark and also here before we start our text and then we can click on done and then we see here okay number one 57 units ordered and here 100 units ordered and again we can just go in our gallery right and now we could uh, hide these two values and then just have our other display value uh, shown here. Now this one provides a lot more information right and we can have uh, a lot more information on a smaller uh, uh, screen real estate but the problem is that if it's uh, information that we want to be able to edit directly here on the gallery view then the first method is better because here what happens if we click into it is that we go right into the formula right so we, i can't uh, modify 100 units or, uh, ordered but with the other method uh, where i have this item still you know on a separate line i could click into that number and then just edit this and update it to you know to 250 that will work so which one of the two you use will depend a bit on your specific use case. And to finish things off, the new Notion feature, database property descriptions. What a game changer for Teams. Now you can finally explain to people what all your properties are about. I really love it when Notion adds these quality of life features and this is certainly one. So now if you're in a table view and you click on any of your properties and click on edit property, you can click on this eye icon. And this will add the option to, well, <laughs> add a property description. So now I can say, well, uh, this number explains something super important and I can just press enter and now you see in my table view I get this like <laughs> information uh, pop up and I can hover over it and now tells the person who's reading well this number explains something super important well thank you very much this also shows up if you open an entry and have your you know properties displayed like this you also you have here now your information thing and you see number one and what it is about so in case you don't want to use page settings or you want to use page settings in combination with some properties up here this can really make everyone's life that much easier i hope you do share my excitement for that first workaround page settings can really make all the difference now if you want to learn another awesome notion trick i've got you covered this is my go-to feature to bring workspaces to the next level just click here and I'll see you in a second.